I can't get in there. That drone was got a mind of its own trying to keep me out of the hot yeah. spot. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody front ending you, ain't they? Somebody's front ending me here. <laughs> Every time I throw the drone mode decides to turn and go the other way. You cut that thing on spot lock or what? Yep. Yeah. Get it on gym lock. You got it on Allen. Allen lock. Locking everybody else out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This week's Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV is brought to you in part by Camelback Hydration Systems. Do you have a camel on your back? And by Bole Sportswear and Sunglasses. Also by Buckbuster Scents. Scents for the serious hunter. And by Carolina Outdoor Hunting and Fishing Supply. Hunting and fishing products at an affordable price. And also by the fine folks at the Triad Bait Company in Lexington, North Carolina. Hey folks, want to keep up with the Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV team? It's an easy thing to do. Just like us on Facebook at Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. And you'll be able to keep up with the behind the scenes clips, bloopers, news and videos, and a lot more. So what are you waiting for? Like us today. Yeah, it would break it, won't it? We're just kind of out in the middle here. At the mercy of the wind. At the mercy of the wind. What, Alan? It ain't bad. No, it's not. Not as bad as, it, you know, it could have been. Now, well, yesterday, that's why I said yesterday, I says, you know, are you getting this wind? It's like we we're back on Clark's Hill. Yeah. Man, was it rough at the house. Nice one. All right. A hot rock cropper. Hot rock Finally found the brush pile I guess, didn't you, Alan? Yeah, I ain't feel it though, but I... Didn't feel it? He, it was close, so... It must have been fairly close. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. A little, a little crappy. Small. I'm bleeding. I'm over. I'm over. Put him in a lot. Well, we're gonna throw him back, but I don't believe he's gonna make it. He's a he's a dripping. If he's still alive when we get back, well, caught him way out there. That ain't, that's a little bit smaller fish. What do you think? Let him grow. Let him grow. Thanks for the fun there, buddy. I sure like your structure, I'll tell you that. And I hope you will too. 
you know. Try it. What gave me the idea before they come out with all these fancy gizmos about we guard and all this other stuff. Like years ago, my daddy took me bass fishing. That's why he always done the worm. Uh huh. That's, that's why five, can't seven. I? Why can't I do a crappy jig? Yeah, why like can't that? do a crappy jig same way? Right. And the only difference is you on a Carolina rig, you got your hooks, you weight suspended up here. Right. The only difference, you know, which we always let up years ago didn't have no Carolina rig. We used the bullet weight and let it go all the way to the hook. But, you know, I said, well, if we could do it back then, we didn't have all them fancy bent hooks, you know, where you could actually made for the hooking back into the worm. We just had a regular straight hook and done it, you know. And I said, well, this is a straight hook. I said, I can't do it. Right. That's what gave me the idea of doing, doing it right here. Fish right there now. Finally found the brush pile. Oh yeah. That's a good good yeah. size there to fillet right there. Yeah, it sure is, especially for Lake High Rock. I mean, catch a bunch of them. Mm. Now Lake okay. High Rock is what, eight inches? No, there ain't no limit. There's no limit on Lake High Rock. Mm. Okay. Catch and keep No them limit, easy no on. size. Yeah. I guess that's because there's so many of them, hi Alan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good half, three quarter pound crappy. All right. When you're done, Alan, what kind of bait you using there? Show us your bait you're using there. It's just a, one of them uh, grubs. Trying to yeah, grubs, use, isn't it? I use yellow and white and chartreuse tail. And the head, it don't really matter. I like I like to use pink. Sometimes I use a pink jig, pink and white. Right. And I undoubtedly must have had a pink and white jig on there before because I got a pink head. Yeah. And it shows up good in this stained up water too. Yeah, the stained right water, you want to use a darker, a little darker color. Yeah. I can't find the one at the back of the boat in the depth finder. I guess I'll try the one here in the front. Well, what it is, is the boat sitting on it. Yeah. And when you're coming up, you're already up above it. Sitting right on it. That's what happens when you get a lot of times you get too close to the brush pile. You'll bring your jig up over the brush pile before you won't be in it. You'll come over it. Right. Instead of being in it. Right. That's the reason I like to stay back and make long casts. You want casts. to stay back so you can cast and, and I want get to cast your over it because when as it sinks, if you don't let out line and if you let out line, it's going to eventually sink back towards the boat. Right. Yeah, when you cast out, you want to let it line out so that jig goes right straight down where you. Yeah, a where lot of times it won't go straight down because you got tension on the line. And you need a little bit of tension because a lot of times they hit, hit it when it's falling. Right. A lot of times when I cast, when as soon as it hits the water just a little bit, I'll pull. And let line out. Ooh, there's a bite right there. Let line out, and uh, that way I get it going down. That way I try to hold just a little bit of tension on it, or watch my line. A lot of right. times you see your line bounce up, you know. But it's really hard to find a brush pile or feel the brush pile at the boat when you're casting like that, because you pull it, as you're winding in, you're coming up. Yeah. And you'll come up over a lot of times. Hey folks, want to keep up with the Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV team? It's an easy thing to do. Just like us on Facebook at Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. And you'll be able to keep up with the behind the scenes clips, bloopers, news and videos, and a lot more. So what are you waiting for? Like us today. Hello folks, are you as passionate about the outdoors like I am? Then tune in each week to Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV or Carolina Outdoor Magazine Radio and catch all the action we have to share with you each week in the great outdoors. Whether you enjoy hiking or camping, or maybe you're a hunting or fishing junkie like I am, you'll be sure to find something you'll enjoy on our show. You can tune in to all the action on our website at carolinaoutdoormagazine.com, Wild TV, or America One Television, as well as being able to download our shows on YouTube at The Outdoor Sportsman. And be sure to listen in to our weekly radio show on Saturday mornings on many North and South Carolina AM and FM stations, or get our podcast on our website or on our Facebook page at Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. This portion of Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV is brought to you by Trophy Ridge Planer Boards and also by the Triad Bait Company and Guide Service. All 
Alright, Alan. There's a triad bait special right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that. Nice one. Nice and white. It's a pretty clean fish here, aren't they, Alan? Sure are. Right there. That's what he come on. Now, Alan, he's using what size are you using? I'm using 16. All right. Mine's an eight. Mine's an eight. Yeah, I just I put just a little bit more weight on there because uh, let me put him back in the water. And uh, I put just a little bit more weight on there, guys, because I just didn't feel like I was getting down in the brush pile. Alan was feeling it, and I wasn't. He may have a little lighter line than I do. I don't know, but uh, or reeling slower. I just felt like I wouldn't get down on the brush pile where I wanted to be, but go back out and try it again. I don't know, that's probably the one that hit me a couple times. That's probably, one, that's probably, that's probably the one that, that got your bait. Yeah, that's the one that was popping at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. A little Look. small, now that's probably the smallest one we've got so far today. Yeah. I feel like me, that water might be a little dingy down there. We're having to fish really slow today because of the cold front. These fish aren't, we're not catching them pop, 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 you know, every two or three casts. We've, that fish right there, Alan probably threw 10 times before he, I had a bite just before then, but he probably threw 10 times before that fish got on. It's just for this cold weather, they're real, real slow right now, but if you just take your time, when they get like this, there's the brush pile. You just take your time when they get like that. Work your way on through the brush piles and everything, and uh, you'll get you'll get a fish on. You just gotta be patient. Didn't take you long to get him at all, Alan. That's a good fish, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he was right there, wasn't he? Yep. We just happened to come across the brush pile and Alan says, put the buoy out, put the buoy out. It had some fish on it. And them, them's the size I like to eat. I don't like them great big ones and I don't like them small ones. That's a good filet size. That's a good filet right size right there. Well, you need to, you need to put him right in the, right in the bucket. He going right in the, he going right in the, he, he probably be on the, he probably be in the fryer tomorrow. Be in the fryer tomorrow. <laughs> It seems like if I throw at the buoy, by the time I start reeling and get back here, I'm in the brush pile. It settles down deep enough, so like it's already there in the brush pile when I get there. When you're fishing like this, guys, and you come across the brush pile, like Alan's been, been saying, when you, when you feel that limb, if you use this technique and the style that he's using to rig his jig, don't go setting the hook because what you're going to do is you're going to pull that jig around and you're going to you're going to pull that hook through there and it's going to stick in that limb. Just when you feel that limb, just drop your rod tip a little bit and let it let that jig settle back down and then just pull it up over the limb. And don't go reeling it in. Drop your rod tip again and let it set back down in there because a lot of times that crap is going to be sitting right there underneath that limb. He's going to hear that thing thump in there and when you drop it back. All you want to feel is that thump, and when you feel that thump, that's when you want to set the hook. What size line are you using? This has got 10 pounds. 10? Same, same as yours, 10, 10. pounds. Okay. Yeah. I always like to use 10 pounds. And well? 10 pounds is a good number because most of the time I use them little wire hooks on them. That way when you get hung, if your hook does get hung, most of the time you can straighten your hook before you break the line. And generally fishing 15 feet of water, the line disappears when you're down there anyways. Right, right. I mean... And, cra and crappies ain't, ain't so particular about what color line right. you got on one. Six I mean, a lot of people, line A lot good. of people use that high vis line, right. that stuff, the crappies, you know, so they can see their line. Six but, pound test is good, eight pounds good, but I'm like you. If you're using 10, you can bend that hook. Well, I use 10 on. for structure and I, didn't use, I go back to lighter stuff when I troll. Right. But in structure, I like to use, I like to use heavy, not real heavy line, but Usually 10. you can pull your jig out. Yeah, yeah, you want to pull my jig out. Got a fish I'm taking. All right, right, right above your head, there you go. Ooh, I got a fish on too, got doubles. That's what we want. 
Let's see, Alan. Um, I'm gonna come under you. Right. This is a little. This is a good fish right here. Right oh too. man, it's a good, good one. Oh, look at the size of them guys. Whoa. Wow. Hold on there. I'm gonna get up there and we'll. Look at that. You get us both in there, all right? Yeah. Ha ha. Hold them up there with them jigs sticking out of there. Oh, mine's in my hand. Look at that. <laughs> I took mine out. Now, Alan's a whole lot bigger than mine, but hey, I think I thought I had a good one on there. I think you got caught around me. You think think they is switched? what happened and made mine feel bigger. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, that's a good pound of quarter traffic. Right you gonna put you gonna put these in the live well? Well, yeah. Okay. Cut. Yeah. Get out my phone. And take a picture. I can't get in there. That trolling was. Got a mind of its own trying to keep me out of the hot yeah, spot. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's front in and you ain't there. Somebody's front in me here. <laughs> Every time I throw, the trolling motor decides to turn and go the other way. You got that thing on spot lock or what? Yes. Got it on gym lock? I got it on Allen. Allen lock. Locking everybody else out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're in there. Oh! He I hit a branch, I let it go down, he popped it so quick I didn't have time to set the hook. Looks like we found a good one there that nobody's fished on lately, Alan. That's funny that you can sit here and fish brush piles for 100 yards apart on the same kind of bank, red clay bank. And you'd always find one that's better than the other one or one that you catch fish on, right. the other two or three you won't even catch fish on. Yeah, I mean, it could be worse, that's for sure. Well guys, we're about out of time today. We've had a really great time out here on the water, catching a few crappy. Uh, this hole here has just kind of gotten to the point where we're catching a lot of small ones and um, we're gonna move on to a, to a better place. Alan's hung up and now's the time to do it. But listen, I wanna thank everybody for tuning in to today's show. I especially wanna thank my buddy up here, Alan Greer from the Triad Bait Company. Make sure you check his website out. Don't forget, we're gonna have a big shindig here, hopefully this summer, sometime, when Alan opens his new store. And you know what? Anybody who's watching this show locally, you're all gonna be invited. So let's pile in there and just overwhelm, overwhelm Alan and let's put him to work cooking us some fish. Guys, thanks for tuning in today. Alan, thanks a bunch, okay? Thanks a lot today for having me, Jim. It's been a, uh, I had a good time fishing with you today. And I hope I, you can take something back and I learned something. I always take like to go out with different people because I learn a lot and from them and they learn, I hope they learn a little bit, a little tidbit from me, as Jim says, a little tidbit. So. But it's been good fishing today, and I hope y'all, uh, when whoever's watching this and sees this, when I have my big show, I'm gonna have like, I'm gonna give away door prizes and stuff like that, and, and probably do like a 10 to 20 percent discount on stuff in the store. It's gonna be like a kind of grand opening thing, you know. I'm gonna have a lot of stuff there to choose from, from deep water crankbaits to, to shallow water fishing to crappy jigs to bucktail jigs. They're gonna be an assortment of stuff, and hopefully when. Y'all see this, and when the time comes and I get ready, which is hopefully soon, probably this summer sometimes, like Jim said, but hopefully we'll get together and I enjoy meeting everybody when I when I do these things. I enjoy talking to people. My wife says I'm a good one to talk because when I go to Walmart, she, she don't want to go with me because I see people and talk to people. I just enjoy talking in general. So we'll catch y'all later and hope to see y'all soon. All right, and guys, it's been a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed this show. I hope we showed you a little something. I'm Jim from Caroline Outdoor Magazine TV. We'll catch you somewhere next week in the great outdoors when we do it all again.